What's going on guys? Pastor Frederick here back with another video. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about demonization, deliverance, casting out demons, all that good stuff. Now I, I believe I owe it to you guys to truly equip you with the right type of resources and tools as it relates to the idea of deliverance and casting out demons. What does it mean? I've done several videos on this topic and for the most part, I've just expressed my critique, my gripes with deliverance ministers, the ministry itself, how it is a little deceptive, misleading, a lot of antics, a lot of, a lot of stuff that goes on that is just not biblical, but I've done you guys a disservice. I have not truly explained in scripture what it looks like to truly have spiritual authority. Because guess what? We do have spiritual authority. We have authority over Satan. We have authority over the demonic forces. We truly do. We should walk in boldness and faith and be spirit filled. We, we are spirit filled. So today I want to just really, I want to look at the strongest, quote unquote, strongest Bible verse that supports the idea that Christians can have demons. Isaiah Saldivar and Ruslan did an interview about a year ago, and they discussed the idea of possession, oppression, oppression, demonization, all these things, all of the semantics. They, Ruslan wanted to get clarity on, on Isaiah Saldivar's position on, on Christians being possessed by demons. So in this video, Isaiah Saldivar mentions one of the strongest Bible verses that supports Christians having demons. So let's check out this clip. And I'm going to give my thoughts on this clip. Acts chapter five. I'm going to give you a word for word, okay? And you guys can take it whatever you want to take it. Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled your heart yeah. to lie to the Holy Ghost let's, and let's, keep can, back. Can, okay. you, can you stop there? I know, I know you're in a flow. I know yeah, you're in a flow. Yeah, yeah, go but, ahead, but, go ahead. but that that passage, when you when you draw when you broke that down on the video, this is a relatively new video you just you just covered. When you broke yeah. down that passage, because a lot of the fo uh, folks are gonna say this is before the resurrection, this is before the Holy Spirit came. But when you shared that passage, I was like, man, that is the strongest argument right there uh, in the New Testament in the Acts in the Church of Acts where you see someone that's apparently a christian yeah apparently yeah. spiritual apparently a christian and 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 is accused of having uh demonization in that moment so i didn't mean to throw you off keep going no no, I, no. I, and I, here's I the love interesting the, part Ruslan, peter could have used any word he wanted he could have said why have you let a demon influence you he could have said mm. why have you let a demon speak to you why have you let satan and a lot of demons are going to say they're satan right they'll imitate and they're not they're trying to act stronger but he, he didn't say none of that he uses the greek word filled now, here's what's interesting. If you go to Acts chapter four, where they were filled with the Holy Spirit, it's the same Greek word. So they get filled with the Holy Spirit, filled, like if you have a glass of water and you fill it with water, and then you go to the Acts five and he says, why have you let Satan fill, like actually fill you? So this is again in um, same Greek word. If you look at So Isaiah believes that we can be filled with the Spirit of God while also being filled with Satan. He used the example of a cup, filling a cup with water, right? I, I agree with that. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, he truly fills you up like a cup full of water. The problem is with that analogy, once the cup is filled up with water, you can't fill it with anything else. It doesn't make sense. You can't fill the cup up with water and then fill the cup up with Pepsi, fill the cup up with something else. You can't do it. The cup is already full. If you put anything else in the cup, it's going to overflow and spill out. So the analogy, which I agree that when you fill with the spirit, you're filled with you're, you're full. You can't be full or filled with anything else. So what did Peter mean? He says that Isaiah Sadovar said that Peter didn't use the word influence. Uh, we, he didn't he didn't mean that. But what did he mean? Well, let's look at the text. In verse three. It says, then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has. So feel your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept to yourself some of the money you received for the land. Now he says, Satan has so filled your heart. 
that you have lied to the Holy Spirit. So did Satan, did Satan literally fill him up? This demonic force, is it Satan? What is it? Now Satan, now Peter says Satan has filled what? Filled his heart. That is a figure of speech. That is a figure of speech. What Peter was essentially saying is Satan has influenced you. And Ananias willingly gave in to Satan's influence. This is what Peter is saying here. That this is what Peter is saying that the Ananias allowed Satan to influence him. Satan did not literally fill him up like that glass of water. You can't be filled with water and with something else. You're either full with water or you're full with something else. Peter was saying that Satan influenced him. Let me show you some scriptures that proves that Satan can influence us. Guess what? Satan can influence us to sin. Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Satan can't influence us to be angry. He can influence us to sin when we're angry. Peter says, don't give no opportunity to the devil to influence you to sin when you're angry. 1 Corinthians 7, 5, guess what? Satan can influence us to sin sexually. It says, do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again so that Satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Here we go again. We see that Satan can tempt us to sin sexually in, in, in a marriage if you're not intimate with your spouse. He can influence us to be angry and sin. He can influence us to sin sexually. He can influence us to lie to the Holy Spirit. This is not being filled with, with, with a literal demon. This is being influenced by a literal demon. And we can be influenced as Christians. We can be influenced to sin by demons. This is absolutely biblical. We can definitely be influenced to sin by demons. There is no instruction in the New Testament, in the didactic books, the teaching books, Romans through Jude, where any of the writers provide a methodology for New Testament Christians to cast out demons. All the examples we see of demons being exercised, being casted out, are from the narrative descriptive books in the Gospels, in the book of Acts. These are not necessarily prescribing or telling us to do these things. These are descriptions of these things being done by the apostles, disciples, some other disciples that Christ empowered to do these things as well. There's nowhere in the scriptures where it tells New Testament Christians to cast out demons. So what type of power do we have? Because guess what? We still have spiritual authority. We have spiritual authority. But here's the greatest greatest passage of scripture that I've really never heard any of the deliverance ministers ever quote, ever teach, ever empower, equip the saints to understand. It's clear. The Bible clearly tells us how to overcome the forces of darkness in Ephesians chapter six. Ephesians six tells us about the armor of of God. What does it say? It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Okay, so we have authority when we place the full armor of God upon ourselves. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against, here it is, rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So clearly, we there is a spiritual realm. Clearly, there are ranking and demonic forces. Clearly, these things do exist. They 
They are all around us and they want to influence us. They cannot possess us. They cannot possess us. They cannot control us. But they do want to influence us. They do want to manipulate us. But when we have the full armor of God, we, we have this, this armor, we can resist and overpower these things. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil come, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This, my friends, is how we overcome the devil with the word of God. Putting all the armor on girds us and protects us against the devil's schemes. It helps us extinguish the fiery darts. It helps us block and 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 repel his his influence, the things that he wants to do, and try to the, his manipulation. All those things are repelled. They're extinguished. They're crushed because we have the armor of God. What about people who are struggling or dealing with sin in their lives? What do we do as Christians for those individuals, whether they're believers, unbelievers? Obviously, we pray for them. We pray for them. But we pray God's will over their life because we don't we don't we don't know what what spirit it is. We can't just name a spirit. Oh, this is a spirit of anxiety. This is the spirit of autism. This is the spirit of heartburn. Like just pray for people. Pray God's will be done in their lives. Are you telling me my kid's possessed? No, I'm telling you, your kid could be demonized and attacked, but your doctor calls it autism. When you pray God's will over somebody's life, you, you understand that the sovereign Lord, he is the one who has deliverance in his hand. Deliverance does not come from us. You might hear that and think, well, yeah, I agree with that. And the deliverance ministers, they say the same thing. They may say it, but they don't do it. They may say, oh, I don't have any power. Deliverance doesn't come from me. This is all God. You know, I have no power. This all is all God. But they don't act that way when they actually pray for people. They they do cast out demons. They do speak with this, this de facto uh, authority. Like they're quasi, like they like they have this type of God complex. They don't come in humility and grace and reverence, fear and trembling when they're praying for folks. They act as if they have the authority to tell this demon what to do. They have this authority to tell Satan what to do in the name of Jesus. That's not how the Bible tells us to to handle people with those situations. If someone is dealing with it could be sin in their life. Most, most 90% of the time is sin that people need to confess to God, repent of, stay in his word, and that's how you get delivered. True deliverance comes from the renewing of the mind. The renewing of the mind. That's where true deliverance comes from. True deliverance is not a physical release. It's not a physical release. True deliverance is a spiritual renewal of your thoughts, of your desires, that wicked heart that we all have. God changed, transforming it from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. Transforming our mind, renewing our mind. When we're, when we're not conforming to the world, when we're not giving in to the world, that's where true deliverance is comes from it's all about the word of god it's all about the scriptures it's all about the sword of the spirit if you enjoyed this video and you want more content like this do me a favor and subscribe to this channel like this video 
and I'll be back next week with another video. This is Pastor Frederick. This is by the book. Peace.